uh, Jennifer Granholm, CNN political director David Chalian, also Trump supporter, American Spectator contributing editor Jeffrey Lord, New Yorker, Washington reporter Ryan Lizza, and Democratic strategist uh, Hillary Rosen. Uh, we've been waiting for David for Donald Trump's response. We, we just got to want to put that up again. The Democrats are delaying my cabinet picks for purely political reasons. They have nothing going but to obstruct. Now have an Obama AG. Um, I mean, I guess Donald Trump could just outright fire her, yes? Uh, certainly he could, although it does have this problem that you just uh, heard Evan Perez discuss, which is that she may be the only person who can approve these uh, foreign uh, intelligence surveillance uh, acts, uh, orders to, to uh, foreign intelligence. But, Anderson, I, I just, what is astonishing to watch, including tonight I'm watching how Donald Trump is going to react, from the very beginning, it didn't have to go this way. This, apart from the policy, the implementation of what went on here, he, he probably could have accomplished the same goals without the blowback if it wasn't sort of the not ready for primetime players putting this together. But, th but that's not I'm the not, case. But I'm not confident that this is just incompetence. I think this might be, this is me being a little uh, sinister here, but they like, uh, they like controversy. They, they want to fight. And let's just game out what could happen. Um, Donald Trump, they like disruption, right? Disruption is a good thing for them. Let's say Donald Trump does fire the acting. Disruption let, chaos let's say, things. well, let's say Donald Trump fires the acting attorney general, right? So now all of a sudden we can't get orders signed. That expedites uh, Sessions confirmation for attorney general. But Democrats, well, but Democrats won't go along with it, right? They filibuster it. Now Mitch McConnell has a perfect excuse to invoke the nuclear option because it's a matter of national security. Now, this is a weird, Matt, crazy yeah, theory, but I'm, just, I'm telling Matt, you how I get, think they Ryan, Ryan Matt, go ahead. cannot filibuster nominees anymore. The nuclear option's already been, uh, that's already happened. Okay, I'm sorry, for the, the Supreme nominees. Court you can, but not for, okay. okay. But, but my I point is agree, it, expedite, it would expedite this I do agree with nomination. Matt, though, that this is now going to be a refer the, the, the Sessions nomination will now be a referendum on the executive order. So for there are, I think there are a few Democrats who have said that they will vote for Sessions. There's going to be a lot of pressure on every Democrat to withdraw that support and any other uh, actions they can take to slow down Sessions' nomination. Jeffrey, could this have been avoided if, you know, some more lawyers were consulted or some lawyers were consulted or, or you know, the head of Homeland Security was consulted or yeah. that, you know, it went through a little bit more rigorous well, screening? Possibly. I'm not a lawyer and I'm not certainly going to play one on TV. But... <laughs> But here's the problem, and Anderson, by chance, I have a column coming out of the Conservative Review discussing this before about this. What we've got here, think about the Badlands uh, Park people defying the president. Think about the Energy Department. Oh, by the way, that, according, was a former employee who had access to ah, Twitter account okay. who then was... Okay. All right, but that's that's why there's other that. examples. The Energy Department refusing to turn over names. The Secret Service agent who said, I'm not going to take a bullet for him. And today we have this uh, idea in the, from the Washington Post about State Department employees saying that they've got a dissent channel and all this. What we've got here is a bureaucracy that over decades, and under Republicans, or under presidents of both parties, have mushroomed here to the point where they think, they're here forever. The president comes and right, goes, but I, I and get, they have I, the freedom to do that. I, she is but I, the lady. I, I, get, I get your well, point, but is that is that really what's going on no, here? No, or is, is it not enough people were actually consulted who exactly. actually should have been? It turns out, you know what, being president is a really complicated thing, and you have to rely on the experts in making your steps, because you have no idea, as a business guy coming in who's negotiated property deals, that this is going to be analogous experience to running an entire government, which is the most powerful position in the world and has consequences across the globe. So now we have the whole uh, Muslim world up in arms. We have Iraq taking action against us. We have our greatest allies, including England and including Germany, coming back at us. We've, we've pissed off, excuse me, uh, Mexico. <laughs> we've got the civil servants who rightly believe that they have been serving our nation and all of a sudden they're being asked to do what they believe are wrongful but acts. Like that, we've got the business Governor, community. I... Let me just finish you. We've got the business community up in arms. We have the faith community who 2,000 faith leaders write a letter to Congress. The whole thing is caving in. And turns out you could have done this better if you had been a better manager. Yes, but that's what my point is. That I know this is crazy, but the Steve Bannon, they, I, I'm not convinced that this is incompetence or mismanagement, right? And let me give you an example. Right, just God, today, he should be impeached. Just, this is flooding the zone. Just today, Donald That's Trump signed sure. an executive order that nobody's talking about that basically changes everything about regulations. They're going to try to, for every one new regulation that passes, they will repeal two regulations. This could have big impact on things like EPA regulations 
Um, you think he was trying to bury that, though? Well, are we talking think, about it? I'm just well, saying they're flooding the zone. I think he was trying to so change the let, subject. Let, let, let's, hold, let's hold this thought. We're going to continue the conversation in a moment. Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren is now on the floor. In the middle of an hour-long speech against the executive orders, we go to break. Let's listen in. Entering the U.S. are offensive and unconstitutional. So where are you right now, Vice President Pence? Have you called to overturn President Trump's offensive and unconstitutional order? Have you asked Republicans to introduce a bill to...